Good evening, everyone. We're learning tonight Masecha Shabbos, Daf Tzadi Vav. And we will be starting toward the bottom of Daf Tzadi Hey, Amud Beis, about five lines from the bottom where it says, Amar Ravasi. Uh, from here until the end of the parak, just about 15, 20 lines, we're just going to be learning a number of shitas, uh, some variations on the theme that we started yesterday. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> yesterday, we learned that there are five gradations of the... Um, of a of a, an earthenware of a pottery type of kli where it slowly but surely becomes more and more problematic the first level was a leak where liquid would go out but very little or none would come in the second was where liquid would not only go out but also come in the third was an olive and then uh still more and more and more as we spoke about in regards to rava that was rava's line in the middle of sadi hamad bays that stated and we started out with uh, these five different levels so we're going to speak a little bit more about that tonight and then Baruch Hashem, um, we'll, we'll uh, share the quick hadron here and then go into Parak Hazorik. Five lines from the bottom, Tzadi Hamad Beis. Amar Ravasi, Ravasi says, Shamati, I heard, Kli Cheres, Shiuro, Kimoti Rimon. I heard that um, that the shear of a Kli Cheres, in order to make a status lose, make a Kli, excuse me, lose its status of being susceptible to Tuma, is that it has to have a hole greater than the size of a pomegranate. So then says Rava, Rava says, Amar le Rava, Rava says, lo mukaf tzamid, tzamid Maybe you only heard that din like I taught it above. What did we learn yesterday about the Tzamit Psil? We said that if a person had a, uh, a jug and the opening of the jug was still covered, but there was a massive hole in the side of the jug. So we still we said that it's still going to be considered tahor, that the only way Tuma enters into a is through its proper opening and not through the sides. So says the Gemara, throws it right back at, at Rava. Rava, that was your din. Rava was the one who taught us that din yesterday, that it's true that something will, uh, will, will lose its status uh, once it's mostly broken down, much larger, even potentially larger than that of a pomegranate. So Rava, you're contradicting yourself. You're trying to make it seem like the din only applies uh, under certain circumstances, but you're the one who said that it applies in the case of Samid Psil. Uh, it says the Gemara to answer this uh, seeming contradiction in Rava, Lokasha, Habirav Reve, Habizutre. One is for, as Rashi points out here, Berubo. One is where there is a majority, like the case we were discussing by the Tzamid Psil. And the other is Bizutre, Rashi here points out, Kimoti Rimon Batalemikli. This is just in general speaking about a Kli, whereby uh, the hole that is larger than that of a Rimon would ruin the Kli. So both Dinim are true, and both can be attributed to Rava. Um, and that is uh, the first statement that we learned of Ravasi. The second statement of Ravasi is we are now on the top of Tzadi Vav Medalaf reads as follows. Shonin, we were taught, <clears throat> this actually is a very important word. Um, if you look in Rashi here, Rashi gives us a little bit of color in regards to what this word actually means. Rashi, top line, Dibur Hamas Chil Shonin, Hatanoim Shonin Brisa. There were certain people in the times of, uh, of the Tanoim who knew Brisa's Valpet. They would sit in Shir. And they would teach uh, when the Rebbe would say, uh, Talmud, you're the, you're, the, you're the memorizer. Teach me all the braises that, that, that have to deal with this suga. And then they'd spit him out like mamish, rolling off their tongue. They knew them cold. They knew them by heart. So that's what shonen means here is that hatanoim shonen braises, that uh, someone in class who was given the responsibility to memorize the braises would, uh, would share that which he knew about the braises. So shonen, it was taught in the braises, says Rabasi, klicheres shiuro, Yesterday, we said that the smallest shear to invalidate a kli is when liquid can leak out. Here, what does he say? Shonen, we have a brysa that says, kli shear bekones mashka, not when it can leak out, the first level that Rava said on the previous page, but rather the second level, which is a hole that's large enough for liquid to enter into the kli from the outside. The only time that first level the first level that was mentioned where a liquid can leak out, that was only said in regards to a shard that was being used as a cleat. Um, it says, it says the Gemara, my time, well, why do we have anything uh, in regards to that shard at all? Why do we care one way or the other if it leaks at all? It says the Gemara, once there's a small crack in, in the shard, no one's going to say, please bring a shard to capture the shard, like to capture the, the dripping from the first broken shard. No one would do that. It's considered broken down enough. But only in regards to shards do we have that parameter of when the liquid leaks outwards. What Rav Asi is coming to say is that when it comes to, to a kli that's really functional otherwise, um, so then the minimum shear that causes problems is the shear 
of uh, Kones Mashka, where liquid can enter from the outside of the Kli. It says the Gemara, five, six lines down on Sadi Vav Aleph, Amar Ula. Ula teaches us a din, Pligi Batre Amorai B'ma'arava. There's a machlokas about the um, uh, among the Amoraim and the Ma'arava in in Eretz Yisrael, <coughs> in the West, relative, of course, to Babel. What were they arguing about? Says Rashi, just to the right, Remember yesterday we were speaking about whether or not a Kli is considered to be uh, cut off from the ground, such that it is then eligible to be uh, to be Machshir Tuma. When something is attached to the ground, it can't, it can't receive or give off Tuma. That's not possible. So what if you have a flower pot that is separated from the ground? It's an atzitz she'ein onaku. It's an atzitz. It's a flower pot that has no hole, so it's not connected to the ground. There, we would say it's like an apple on the counter, no different. And we would say that it's susceptible to tuma with one of the seven liquids with which tuma can be transferred. Very good. That makes sense. So there's a machlokas here. Amar ula pliga batrea morei b'marava. Reb Yossi b'rev avin v'rev Yossi bar zavda. How big is the hole in the pot in order to make something no longer eligible for the world of Tuma. Chad Amar Kimoti Rimon, one says it's a very large shear, and namely as long as the hole in the Kli is less than the size of a Rimon, then that would be no different than the apple on the counter, and that's treated like something that can be machshar Zerayim, something that can transfer, can, uh, can get Tuma and can transfer Tuma. However, that's only one of the Amarim. Chad Amar Kishorish Katan, and one says at the opposite end, it's a very small hole, where uh, enough that a root, a little part of the root of what, uh, whatever is growing can come out of the hole that's in the crack in the, inside, the, uh, inside the flower pot. And in order to remember, these were the two extreme shita. So just a little phrase to remember. Rashi, the Rishonim here, going to explain, wait a minute, that's not really true. Because the greatest of all of them was granted the remote. But the least of all of them, with, within Rava's list, and that's what we're referencing here, the least of all of them was, uh, was the first one where something leaks out. So even if you want to say we actually reject that because above Ravasi limited that to say, no, come on, that's only in regards to a shard. Fine, but then why isn't it the second case of, of Kones Mashke, where it's the second level where a liquid can enter in from the outside? So this is a discussion in the Rishonim. Nevertheless, that is shot here in the, in the Gemara, Echad Amar Bev Echad Amamit, the two extremes. Um, on the on the mamit side, on the lesser side, that is going to be one of the sheets here, as mentioned. That as long as it's a chumra, actually, that the uh, that if the hole is able to uh, allow a root to pass through it, so then it is now considered machshir lizrai. Then it can it, the whatever is growing in that flower pot is then susceptible to tuma. Um, but the more lenient sheet that says no, it's not susceptible to tuma until the hole is the size of a pomegranate. We're going to have two different understandings of the opinion of Rabbi Eliezer here. Rav Chinina says in the name of Rabbi Eliezer, When do we say that uh, a Kli Cheres is going to lose its status? That's in when, only when it uh, has <clears throat> something, a hole in it the size of an olive. Well, Mark Shisha, Bered Rabbi Messiah, but Mishmed Rabbi Eliezer, Mark Shisha understood Rabbi Eliezer, Rabbi Eliezer differently. No. If you have that, this is like um, <clears throat> pottery that was made from some type of manure um, or kliyavana made out of stone or kliyadama made out of earth. Not at all, nothing at all. So there's two different understandings in regards to how Rabbi Eliezer understood the, the minimum sizes of shiurim in order to cause for susceptibility of tuma. And then the last in is similar to what we learned in Rava a couple of days ago, the same din that Rava taught us yesterday, that one is um, one who has a kli and the opening is tamid psil, it's closed off. So no tumas mace will transfer to, uh, through the opening. That's true. Um, and the kli itself will be, will, will be tahor until, until the, most of the, the phys- 51% of the kli is broken. And at that point, then things will then become Tama yet again. For Hashem, that brings us to the end of the Perak of uh, Perak Matzniah. Hadron Allah Matzniah, Hadron Allah Matzniah, Hadron Allah Matzniah, seven and a half years until we come back to this page in Hashem. The next Perak speaks uh, quite practically about some more areas of halacha in regards to carrying. <clears throat> and one of them has to do with uh, throwing. When we were little kids, we'd stand in the backyard and see if we could throw to the Scheinfeld's house. They lived a few houses over. So we'd take a ball in our backyard, we'd launch it as far as we can and see if they could catch it over there. That's three, four yards over, whatever it is. Now we live within, the, within a world that's an Eru. 
But let's conceptualize something that's slightly different. Take a look at this Raj, at this, at this Mishnah as it opens in the new parak, parak Hazorik. Hazorik me Rishus Hayachi, the Rishus Harabim. Let's say I'm throwing from my house out into a public domain, or the reverse. Me Rishus Harabim, the Rishus Hayachi, from a public domain into my house. I'm throwing. Chayat. Now, this is just an iteration on the theme of transferring Rishuyos, except that we've seen a bunch of, a bunch of different iterations. One is Moshit, which is handing things over. Um, there, there are just different ways to do it. One is Dalad Amos Rishus Harabim, which we'll briefly speak about tonight. And here's another one, which is throwing. So if it's clean, if you're throwing from one Rishus to another, the Rishus Hayachi to a Rishus Harabim or vice versa, everyone agrees that that's going to be an Isar Doraisa. That's for sure, Yechai, no question about it. Line three of the Mishnah. Let's say I'm throwing from my front porch to the, to the front porch across the way. And let's say that the street is deemed a Rishus HaRabim. So then what? Now, the starting point and the ending point uh, are both Rishus HaYachid. But in the air, it actually transferred over a Rishus HaRabim. So you may recall that this is a machlokas that we saw many blot ago in regards to a sugya called kluta kemisha hun chadamia, that if something is flying through the air of a rishus harabim, it doesn't stop, it doesn't pause, but do we say that when it leaves the first rishus hayachi and is now in the airspace of the rishus harabim, do we assume that it's as though it landed in that space such that you'll be chayet? This is a machlokas tamay. Rabbi Akiva Mechaya, Rabbi Akiva says, yes, we hold Kluta Kimisha Hun Chadamia, that when it's in the airspace of the Rishus Harabim, it's as though it's landed, and therefore you did an Akira and a Hanacha, and then another Akira and Hanacha. You're going to be Chayib in that case. The Chachamim Potrim. However, the Chachamim say that you are exempt. The Gemara now says the following Mishnah says, Ketad, how is this? What is the case? Now, if you were to read the next couple of lines, it, it seems very clear that they're only speaking about one of the two shitas, not Rabbi Akiva. It seems like it's the Chachamim. Rashi says as much here. Rashi, Dibur HaMashchil, Ketzad Shtei Gizus Traos L'chulei, Rabbanon Ka'amrei Lu. This is according to the Rabbanon. These are the, ram, the rabbis who are talking. What did the rabbis say? The rabbis say that if you throw from a Rishus HaYachid to a Rishus HaYachid with a Rishus HaRabim Be'em, so that's your puzzle. So we should expect a similar line here. Let's say there were two porches, zo keneged zo, opposite each other. Birshus harabim. So in, in such a case, the chachamim held hamoshid vehazorik. Whether you can extend your hand across the rishus harabim, or you hazorik, you throw somebody, your neighbor across the street says, "Hey, do you guys have any salt?" So you take the container of salt, you close it up good, you have a good arm, you toss it across the street. So in such a case, um, because it's ending up in the same rishus, because really in lamdus the chachamim hold that Kluta is not Kemisha Hun Chadamia, that when it enters the airspace of the Rishus HaRabim, that's the middle space, Rishus HaYachid to Rishus HaRabim to Rishus HaYachid. So when it's hovering over this middle space, we don't consider that as though it's landed, and therefore they hold that you're pumped. HaYishtem Bidyu Ta'achas. However, instead of throwing across the street, let's say my neighbor just to the side of me, and the space in between us is a Rishus HaRabim. So then what? Maybe things are going to be a little bit different. HaYishtem Bidyu Ta'achas. They're on one side of the street. Then HaMoshit Chayiv. Then if I were to hand you the salt across the way, instead of going across the street, I'm going to my neighbor to my left or to my right, and I reach over and I hand them the salt, HaMoshit Chayib HaZorik Patr. Why the distinction? Why here would we say that Moshit is Chayib? Handing something over is going to be Chayib. All we did, one was across the street. Now it's my next door neighbor to my side. What My Nafkamino answers the Gemara with a very critical understanding, answers the Mishnah, I should say. Shekha Chaysa Avodah Salavim. This is what the, the Levim would do when they were building the Mishkan. What, what was the Matthias there? Shtei agalos zo zo. There were two agalos, one that followed the other. And this is the equivalent to the, to the side-by-side neighbor. We live right next to each other. It's not across the street. We live right next to each other. I can reach you and you can reach me. So shtei agalos zo achar zo b'rishus harabin. Moshitin hakroshim yizo lezo abalo zorkin. We do, we do know that the boards of the Mishkan were passed from one Agala to the next and when, when the Jews were building the Mishkan, when the Levim were, were taking responsibility to build the Mishkan. And because of that, therefore, the Moshit is going to be problematic because that's exactly what happened in the Mishkan. I, what about Zorik? They didn't throw the boards. The boards were heavy. The boards were delicate. So therefore, Zorik is not an Isser Doraisa. Zorik is going to be an Isser Dorabanan, according to the Chachamim of Allah Zorkin. When it comes to Zorkin, it's going to be an Isser Dorabanan. Rashi here, just at the bottom of the page, it kind of enters into a big machlokas in regards to the text of this Rashi, but, but one that is actually, um, this is one of those times where the placement of one letter changes everything. Check this out. Rashi says, they did not throw. If, 
if one were to throw from one neighbor to the next, it would, according to the Chachamim, it's a desert der Abbanon. She'ein osan krushim nizrakos, these boards were not thrown, mivne kovdan, because of their weight. But there are some Rishonim who don't write that. They write mivne kivodan, because it's a kavod, because we don't want to treat the krushim, we don't want to treat the boards of the Mishkan without appropriate kavod, the main for something in the Mishkan that's not heavy. So the, this discussion in the Rishonim is significant. Rashi here says, kov done, kovet, it's weight, mainly only because it's heavy, but it's not a lack of cover to throw something, potentially. And uh, of the other Rishonim who say, mipnei kivodan, just switching the bays and the vav, huge nafkaminas, huge nafkaminas. This actually does come up in one area of halacha. We learned about this earlier, I can't remember where, about uh, the, the concerns about throwing bread. Uh, whether or not that's a lack of kavod. So the Shulchan Aruch writes that it's not allowed. Some others write that it is allowed. Uh, but uh, is it a question of kavod? Is it not a question of kavod? So that would be a, an application of this idea. And that brings us to the uh, top of Sadi Vavam and Beis <clears throat> as we begin the Gemara, which then analyzes this Mishnah. Sadi Vavam and Beis, top line. Mechdi Letzi, Zrika, throwing on Shabbos when we say that it's Aser either in the beginning of the Mishnah, when you're throwing from Rosh Hashanah to Rosh Hashanah or vice versa, or according to the end of our Mishnah, where we had our Machlokas, but according to Rabbi Akiva, Zrika, when it is Chayib, it's Tolda de Hotzahi. It is a Tolda, uh, it is not the Ab, it's not what was done in the Beis HaMikdash, but it's the Tolda of Hotzah. Asks the Gemara, Hotzah Gufa Hechik Siva, where in the Torah do we see the Yisra of Hotzah? Tosos is like, what are you... What, what are you talking about? Do we ever ask this question by any of the other 39 malachos? Where do you see the malach of Shtei Bateinir? Where do you see the malach of Kosher? Where do you see the malach of Kosei? Where do you see the malach of anything? Why are we even, why are we asking this question? Hotza gets special treatment. Doesn't even make any sense. Where's the integrity to the question? We're not asking it by the other 38 malachos. Take a look at Tosvos, Dibur Hamaskel, Hotza, Gufa, Hechak, Siva. Says Tosvos, the Afal Gav, Shehaisa B'Mishkan, Kide Amrinan, Heim Horidu Krashen Me'agala, even though it does say that they, uh, it, it does say it, that in regards to the Mishkan that uh, that they took the boards off of the Agalas, Mikol Makom, Ilav Dixiv, Lo Havamechayve Allah, if not for the fact that by Hotza, if not for the fact that there was a Pasuk that indicated that Hotza was Aser, then Lo uh, Havamechayve Allah. Wow, that's crazy. Then it might be the case that there would have been no Iser Dorais of carrying on Shabbos. Why? This is a line we've spoken about. I believe we opened the Masechli with it as well. Because the Malach of Hutza, nothing is happening to the item. When I move something from one Rashus to another, throw it a football, the football is still a football. The wall is still a wall. But when I'm writing, something changes. When I'm weaving, something changes. When, when I'm threshing, when I'm plowing, when I'm doing something changes, but really, really nothing happens in Hotza to the item. Its location changes, but to the entity itself, it's a Hefza Gavra type of model. To the Hefza, to the, uh, to the object that we are in discussion about, nothing changes. And therefore, some Rishonim hold, like Tostos here, the Ramban as well writes a similar concern, that that's why, without a Pasuk, without giving me a real Marimakom, because Hotza is a Malacha Gerua, so then Havamina might have been the case that I would have thought that one would have been Pater on the Malacha in its entirety. Very, very important Tosos, because again, we need to make sure that when the Gemara is asking a question that we're being even-handed, why didn't we ask it by the other 38? And the answer is that this is different than the other 38, because it's a Malacha Grua. Very, very helpful Tosos to kind of give some, uh, give some picture, a little richness in regards to some of the distinctions in Malachos and what we would have thought if not for the Pasuk itself. Let's get back to the Gemara. Top line, Hotza, Gufa, Hechatsiva, what's the Pasuk? Amar Rav Yochanan, the Amar Kra, the Pasuk says, Rav Yochanan quoting from the Torah, Vaitzav Moshe Vayaviru Kol Bamachane. What is this Pasuk? The Pasuk continues there, I'll just read it from the side, I don't know it by heart. It says that uh, Moshe commanded Vayaviru Kol Bamachane, and his voice was passed through the camp, lay more to say, Ishvi Isha, Al Yasu Od Melacha Lesurma Sakodesh. Don't bring any more money for the Mikdash. We raised enough money, Vayikaleha Am Mehavi. And the Jewish people stopped bringing items. Okay, so that's what the pasuk is. Moshe Hechan Havayasi. Where was Moshe? Moshe was a Levi, so he was in the Levi camp. The Machan Elavia. Fourth line. Umachan Elavia. Rishus Harabim Havoy. So what was the pasuk basically saying? The pasuk was basically saying that Moshe said to the Jews, "Ve'ka'amar lo." He said to them, "Leisrael, lo safiku ve'seisu me Rishus Hayachid didchu le Rishus Harabim." 
don't come from your Rishus HaYachid to me, I'm in a Rishus HaRabim. Don't come to me anymore. That's shot in the Pasuk that says, Vayaviru kol bamachane. That's what, what he was telling them. Don't, nobody else come. We don't need, you have to stop now. I, what does that teach us? That there's Hotza. So it asks the Gemara, how do we know that that day of the week was Shabbos that Moshe stopped the Jews from coming? Dilma bechonkai. Maybe he was stopping them during the week. Maybe it had nothing to do with Hotza. Maybe just shot in the pasuk is that Malachi said, they had enough physical things. Stop bringing the jewelry. I don't need any more. Forget about coins. I don't know, they, that may be muksa. But, but I, the women were bringing their jewelry. So the, the Gemara's initial answer was, no, it must be that Moshe was concerned about carrying because he said to stop bringing it. So the Gemara says, how do you even know it's Shabbos? Maybe the reason why they stopped, it was a Tuesday, but maybe the reason why they stopped is because, uh, is because Moshe had enough answers the Gemara, the reason that we know that it was Shabbos is because Gomar Ha'avara Ha'avara Miyom HaKippurim. We have the word Ha'avara by our Pasuk. Ksiv Hacha by Ya'aviru Kol Bamachane. Uksiv by Yom Kippur. Uksiv Hasan by Ha'avarta Shofar Trua. And Ma'ala Halan by Yom Iser. Afkan by Yom Iser. Just like over there by Yom Kippur, we know that there's a day that there's, that that's a day where there's Iser Malacha. Uh, and oh, Afkan, even over here, by Yom Iser, that there is a, a day that's Iser Malacha. What day must that be? That day must be Shabbos. And that's how the Gemara concludes that we know that the reason that there is an Isra of Hotza and Shabbos is from this Pasuk by Aviru Kol Shofar B'Machana. By Aviru Kol B'Machana. Very good. Says the Gemara, a very strange question. Ashkechan Hotza. Fine. You've given me the answer of how I know that you cannot go from a Rishus HaYachid to a Rishus HaRabim. Got it. Clear. Crystal clear. Hachnasam Nalan. What about the other way? What about going into a house? From Rishus HaRabim to Rishus HaYachid. Says the Gemara, come on, Svarahi, it's, a, it's just a very rational jump. If you're not allowed to do one, you're not allowed to do the other. So says the Gemara, Michti, Mirashus, the Rishus, Michti, Mirashus, the Rishus. So let's see, when we analyze it, you're going from one Rishus to another Rishus. Mali Afuke, Mali Iyule, going in, going out. What's the difference? This, why are you making such a distinction? Of course, it's going to be the same Isra for Hachnasa from going from a Rishus HaRabim into a Rishus HaYachid. And like the Pasuk said by Moshe, by Rishus HaYachid, it goes both ways. Mihu, the only caveat that we need to share is the following. Hotza av Hachnasa tolda. However, there is a difference. One is that Hotza is the av malacha, and we'll see what that means today, the Nachkeminas. And, um, and Hachnasa, but going into a house is a tolda. They're both eligible for Yisuri Del Raisa. However, one is an av and one is a tolda. Says the Gemara, Umichti, Ahomechai, But when you look at it, really, what's the difference? You made the distinction of Av and Abav and Tolda, but at the end of the day, you're Chayav on both of them. So, my nafkamina between an Av and a Tolda. Says the Gemara, Amai Kari Lohav, Kari Lohai Av, Amai Kari Lohai Tolda. Why was one called an Av, the Hotza, going from Rashi Sayachi to Rabin was called um, uh, an Av? And why was the reverse going from outside to inside a hachna? So why was that called a tolda? Says the Gemara, nafkamina. Here's the difference. If a person does two avos malachos at the same time, or inami shte toldos then mechayev tarte. If you do either two um, avos malacha, two hotzas, or you do uh, two hachnasas, in such a case, you'd be mechayev tarte. But if it was a mixed bag of isurim, the e avid ab vitolda. If one of your isurim was an ab and one was a tolda, then the day lo mechayev elachada has to be tolda the day. Has to be an av of hotza and a and a and a tolda of hachnas. Has to be at the same alacha. So then you're only going to be chayev one. But that's not true according to everybody. Ule Rabbi Eliezer the mechayev told him a makom av. According to Rabbi Eliezer, if you do an av and a tolda, even of the same malacha you're still going to be held accountable. You're still going to be chayv tarte. So I understand, according to everybody else who doesn't hold like Rabbi Eliezer, that if you do an av and a tolda, that you're going to be uh, putter. If you're, you're not going to be putter. You're going to be chayv only one korban. But according to Rabbi Eliezer, that we do separate the av, the makom tolda, and each of them have their own chayv, and you're chayv two korbanos. You've done two isurim. So then, then, then amai karule av, then amai karule tolda. According to Rabbi Eliezer, why does he then make a distinction in language between an av and a tolda? Answer the Gemara: Hach the Havoi the Mishkan Chashiva Karila Av. 
that which is found in the Mishkan is considered to be Chashiv and gets the title of Av, and Hach, the Loh Havai be Mishkan Chashiva, that which was not considered to be Chashiv in the Mishkan, Lo Kari La Av, that doesn't get the name of an Av. Says the Gemara, Inami, yet another answer, Hach, the Chsiva, Kari Av, the Hai, the Loh, the uh, Loh Ksiva, Kari told, and regard to Tzavach Nasa, because Hotza was Ksiva, it was based on a Pasuk in the Torah by Aviru Kolba Machane. So that's why it gets the status of an Av. Otherwise, you're granted. The Gemara Svara was perfect. Mali Afuke, Mali Le'iyuli. Who cares which direction you're going? They both should be Aser. But which one gets the title of Av and which one gets the title of Tolda? That, in this case, with the Malach of Hotza, depends on whether or not it was uh, form, formulated in a Pasuk. So because the Hotza was found in a Pasuk by Aviru Kolba Machane, so therefore it's an Av. Asha'in Kane, when it comes to um, Hachnasa, going from Rishus HaRabim to Rishus HaYachid, that's not in the Pasuk. So therefore, it's not going to be an Ab, but rather it will be a Tolda. The Gemara then asks the question, we're halfway down on Sari Vavam Abbas. It's not, the Haditz Nan, wait a minute, the Mishnah says, Azorik Dalar Amos Bakosel, Lamalam Yud Tzvachin Kizorik Bavir. If you throw something uh, sticky, that's against, you throw it against the wall above 10 Tzvachim, so then it's, uh, it's, uh, it's Kizorik Bavir, like you threw it in the air. Uh, and if you threw it less than 10 tvachim, it, it landed on the wall below 10 tvachim. It's as if you threw it on the ground. And in addition to throwing something and having it stick to the wall, if you throw something, what's the din? So all this is a Mishnah. Says the Gemara, Zorak Dalad Amos Bershus Harabin Minolan de Mechayev. What have we been talking about so far? We've been talking about Hotzav Achnasa, but we haven't found the Mari Makom for Zorik. It wasn't done in the Mishkan. We pointed out already, either that Rashi on the bottom of the page, either because of Kovdan or Kivodan. But nevertheless, there was no Zorik there. So Mehecha Tesi that it should be Asr in the first place. What's the Mari Makom to indicate that being Zorik Dalad Amos Bershus Arabim has any precedent for Isser in the Torah whatsoever? Says the Gemara, Amar of Yoshia, Shekane Orge, Yerio, Zorkan, Machtehen, Zelaze. Because the weavers, the people who, who wove together the, uh, the fabric that made up some of the walls in the Mishkan, they would throw needles to one another. It says the Gemara, the organ? O- organ are the weavers. Organ, machten they didn't. Their, their tool of trade was, it wasn't needles. They, they used a loom. They used a, a weaving machine. It wasn't this. They didn't have needles. It says the Gemara, Ela shekain tofre areas. You're right. I didn't mean the people who are the weavers. I meant the people who are the seamstresses, uh, the men and women. Probably, I think the Gemara actually specifically says it was women at a different point, that they were the ones who were stitching together one piece of, of fabric to another. Very good. So now we know who we're talking about. It's the tofre areas. They throw the needles to each other. I have a Dilma, Gabe Hadad, they have a Maybe they were sitting right next to each other. It says the Gemara, it can't be because Matu Hadad, they bemachten. They'd keep poking each other with the needles if they were sitting so close. Okay, Dilma Besoch Arba Arba Besoch Arba Habu Yasve. Maybe they weren't sitting on each other's laps, but maybe they were five feet apart within Dalad Amos. Maybe they were three Amos apart. Why do you have to say that the Matthias was that they were Dalad Amos apart? And therefore, that's where we learn Zorik from. Says the Gemara, you're right. El Amar of Chizda Shekain Orge Yurios Zorkin Buchiar Biria. Let's go back to our initial group of people. Really, we're talking about the weavers. And what they would do is they would throw the roll of thread across the way so that it could be put under um, some of the ropes. And then the ropes would, would switch directions. And then they throw another rope through back and forth. So maybe when they throw the spool of thread, that was the answer. So it says the Gemara, Behalo Ogdo Biyado, two lines before it gets wide. Behalo Ogdo Biyado. But when you do that, you're still holding part of the string in your hand. That's the whole point because you want that string to be underneath all of those threads, or I should say in between all of those threads. So when you throw the spool, you're still holding on. So it's not really a pure throw. You can't learn Zorik from there if you're still holding on to the ends of the thread. So it says the Gemara, um, Vinis Chabasra. We're talking about the last piece of thread, and therefore it's considered a full Zorik because you're no longer holding on to the thread itself. It says the Gemara, wait a minute. All of this was above 10 Tzvachim. Why would you, where's the Isser of Zorik? This, you're above 10 Tzvachim. What's the Havamina Bichlal? What's our starting point? Ela, last of the short lines. Ela, Shekane, Orge, Rio, Zorkin, Buchi, Arla, Shoah, You're right. We're not talking about that. We're talking about people who would pass on spools of thread to other people on the same side of the loom as them. Just they were using the threads together. They were sharing the thread, as it were. Instead of throwing it across the loom so that the thread could perfectly weave in between each of the high and low uh, strings, 
they were just giving it down the aisle to their friends. That's the Shoah Lane. Rashi here defines the Shoah Lane Shoa if you want to take a look there. First of the long lines, maybe they were sitting next to each other. Again, same line of questioning. You need to prove this to us. The, the burden's on you. You want to tell me that Zorik is usher? You got to prove it to me. Maybe they were sitting close to each other. How do I know they were Dalit Amos apart? Says the Gemara, Matu Hadade Bechetes. They were not sitting that close to each other because of the way that the machine was set up, the way the loom machine was set up. They weren't sitting that close. The Dilma Shal Hufe Havu Mishal Hufe. Maybe they were sitting uh, in an alternate way where they, uh, where it wasn't, uh, where it wasn't going to still be Dalit Amos. Vesu and furthermore. Did, did they really borrow spools of thread from one another? That's not the case. And according to some, Levi, but it's the name of Atana either way. The Pasuk says, And the Gemara makes a drush in this b'risa. Nobody was borrowing spools of thread. Everybody had their own thread. So what do you mean that they were throwing it to the Shoalei and they were giving it to other people to borrow? What does that even mean? That's not the case. Everybody had their own thread. Visu and furthermore, three lines down into the wide line. Mavir Dalid Amos Pirshus Harabim in Alam Dimechayim. Even before we speak about Zorik, we don't, we don't know in general about carrying Dalid Amos Pirshus Harabim. We know about Otsar Achnasa, but we don't, have, we don't know anything in regards to moving Dalid Amos Pirshus Harabim. Think about the drastic nature of what we're talking about here. Some, uh, I was listening to a shir on this. Why wasn't this on Daf Beis? This is such fundamental issues. Why are we only discussing now the Mar and the Komos for Hotzan Hachnasa, which we prove, and now Dalad Amos Berchus a separate Iser Daraisa, one for which maybe your Chayv Skila be Skila. That's crazy. And we don't even know the Mar Makom for it. Why are we only learning it on Daf Tzadi Vav? And we're so far into the Masechta, more than halfway done. Unbelievable. Nevertheless, the Gemara points out, we don't even have, even have a Mari Makom for that. So therefore, answers the Gemara. We're going to tie up a pretty bow here. We asked a, a dozen questions here, back and forth. Shakla Vitaria. How do we know about the Dalad Amos Sarabim in regards to Zorek? And then adding into the mix, forget about just Zorek, just Mavir, carrying Dalad Amos Sarabim. What's the Mari Makom for that? Answers the Gemara. Ela kol Dalad Amos Sarabim Gemara Gemirila. Ah. Oh. We're going back to a, uh, a, a basic uh, response, a basic idea that it is a halacha l'mosh misinai. The phrase of Gemara Gemirila indicates that it is halacha l'mosh misinai. The Rambam um, uh, details what the specific number of and the whole list of these, um, these halacha l'mosh misinai. And this is one of them of Dalad Amos Bershus Arabim, both in regards to Mavir, just carrying something Dalad Amos Bershus Arabim with an Akira and a Hanacha. And as well with Zorik, of course, when you're Zorik, there's always an, an Akira and Hanacha. If I'm going to throw a football 10 feet, uh, I could be Chayv Midoraisa. I would be Chayv Midoraisa. And that's based on this Halacha Lemosh Misina. Continues the Gemara at the two dots, five lines into the wider line. And we'll be ending about five lines from the bottom. As you know, the famous story in the Torah, a number of weeks after the Jews received the Torah, there was a, a Yid. Uh, who uh, Nebuch uh, violated one of the Isurei Torah, he's referred to as the Makoshesh Eitzin, the person who collected wood. But uh, we don't know exactly what he did wrong because Makoshesh is not one of the 39 Malachos. So that is here subject to a debate in the, uh, the Amoraim, as uh, Amoraim Antanaim, I should say. So what did he do wrong? Amor of Yehuda, Amar Shmuel, or Yehuda Amar Shmuel, second generation of Amoraim. So this is early Amoraim. Um, Makoshesh, what did he do? Ma'avir Arba Amos Birchus Arab Hama. That's what he violated. And now think about the history. Halacha the Moshe mi Sinai. Moshe told us at Sinai three weeks ago that there is no uh, pasuk for it. I'm just telling you, Akadosh Baruch Hu told me you cannot be marba, you cannot be mavir arba amos berushus What does this yid do? He picks up some wood and he walks down. That's a chutzpah. You just learned about this three weeks ago. The freshest of the fresh. It doesn't get better than that. You just heard it from Moshe. So that's an unbelievable uh, historical timing that one just learned a halacha l'moshem Sinai and violated it right away. So that's the sheet of Rabbi Yehuda Mar Shmuel, that the Isra of the Makoshesh, this person who, uh, who did something with the sticks on Shabbos, is that he did ma'avir arba amos b'rishus rab. V'mas nisa tana, in the tanoim, we have a marim makom, tole shaba. He, he uh, uh, did kotzer, he tore something off of, of its life source. He tore off a branch. Rav Achab, Rabbi Yaakov, Amar me'amer haba. Me'amer, as pointed out in the Mishnah 9 Gimel, is collecting something into a pile. If apples fall off of a tree and you collect them into a pile, so that's the Isser Doraisa of Me'amer. Ask the Gemara, I mean, like, I guess it's good to know what he did wrong. 
but the my nafkamina, who, who cares? And the Gemara gives a staggering nafkamina, a very important nafkamina. Answers the Gemara, the nafkamina is lichide rab, for that which we learned from rab. We saw this Gemara on Dach Vav much earlier in the Masechta. The Amar Rav, Rav says, Matzas in Megillah Starim Be Rabchia. He said, I found a, a book. It was a book called the Megillah Starim. The Mephorshim point out on Dach Vav that the Megillah Starim was a book where the Chachamim at that time were writing down some of their Torah Shabbal Peh. It had yet to be the case that it was uh, ubiquitously accepted that you could just write down Torah Shabbal Peh. And they didn't want to forget certain things, so they wrote certain things down but they kept them hidden and called them a Gilas Tarn. So they found it and they were looking in it. The Kasuba, Isi ben Yehuda, and Isi ben Yehuda, Atana, he said, Omer, our avos are boim, uh, avos malachos are boim chaser achas, the eno chayev el achas. He says there are 40 malachos minus one, and you're only chayev on one of them. He says the Gemara, what do you mean you're only chayev on one of them? The Gemara says, Achas Vesulo, you're only Chayv on one of the 39 Malachos? How is that possible? That we, first of all, we know differently, but it's not. Ten lines from the bottom, but it's not. Avos Malachos are Baim Chasar Achas. When we looked into this Gemara, Minyan Alamali, we've seen this line a number of times in the Masech, the Vamar of Yochanan, Shimason Kulam Behel Mechad Chayv Al Kol Achas Ve'achas. What are you talking about? We know that there are separate Yisurim for all of the Malachos. So what, what was found in Megillah Starin? It can't be that there was only one Isser, one of the one of the thirty nine actually have an Isser Malacha. So the answer is the Gemara, you're right. Ema Eno Chayev Al Achas Mian, that there is one of the thirty nine Malachos for which you are not Chayev. There are thirty nine Malachos. One of them you're not Chayev for. Now, if we pause right here and look back at the Tatosos, we easily would have argued Hotza. But not everybody felt that way. Even though it's true that it's a Malacha Gerua, uh, we allow for carrying on Yantif, even though it's not Malacha Soho Nefesh. Normally, the only types of malachos that we allow on yantif are things that are shaykh to cooking. You're allowed to do bishal, you can do certain, certain other. What is hotza? Have anything to do with yantif? So the Rishonim there point out, the Ramban and others point out that it's a malachar gerua. So because we already have a leniency by yantif of malachar sochel nefesh, so therefore we're going to be even more mekel and we're going to also expand the kulas, the leniency. I felt that it's a malachar del raisa. So we're going to expand, expand the leniencies. <clears throat> we're going to expand the leniencies by yantif to hotza as well. So that's what the Gemara says is part of our answer. How does this help us? Because there is one malacha and that if a person does it, they are not going to be held accountable. And that's very important in regards to what the Makoshesh did. We want to know which of the 39 malachos is the one for which one would not get skila. Let's see what the Gemara has to say about this. Rav Yehuda, Rav Yehuda says, Pshita le de hamavir chayv. He says, I can tell you one thing. It's not havara. Mavir Dalar Amos Pirshus Harabim. Sorry, poor language. It's not Mavir Arba Amos Pirshus Har language. Havar is another uh, word for lighting a fire. It is not Mavir Dalar Amos Pirshus Harabim. There, Rabbi Huda says, You're Chayet. Umas Misa, Shitale de Tolish Chayet. And there, the Mishnah teaches us the second opinion of what the Makoshesh did. He says, Well, I don't know what it, which one isn't, but it certainly is not uh, Tolish. There, for sure, you have an Isser Doraisa. And the third sheet of Ravacha Bar Yaakov, Pshitale de Ma'amr Chayv. And he says, for sure, that by Imur, by collecting, by gathering, by making a pile, and he thought that that's what the Makoshesh did, that under those circumstances, one is as well going to be Chayv. Mar Savar, Hamiyas Lomasafka. Umar Savar, Hamiyas Lomasafka. Each one on their own said, I don't know which one is not Chayv, but it's not, not the one that I'm telling you. So we don't have a conclusion to this, but there, there does seem to be a Shita uh, that indicates that one of the 39 Malachos is not subject to the Chayv. So this raises a massive question in the, in the Mephorshim. If it's true that one of the 39 Malachos is not allowed, to, is not, it's just not subject to the Yisuri Eskila, how can anyone ever be put to death in Bezdin for violating Shabbos? It, it, how, how does it even work out? One of the Malachos, there's got to be at least a suffix. We don't kill people unless there's a Vados. So how does it work out? So that's something the Rishonim have to struggle with because... Uh, seemingly, if a person is going to uh, to be killed, we have to be pretty sure about it. So we'll stop here for tonight. My brother Howard in Rish Hashem will be teaching Daf Yomi tomorrow night here on Zoom, same time, same place, nine o'clock, lot and a half. He'll be learning Daf Sadi Zayin with you uh, toward the bottom of Sadi Ches and Um and uh, I'm going to be still posting a recording um, in Rish Hashem after his Daf Yomi. Yeah, somewhere around 9:45, 10 o'clock. I'll, I'm going to schedule it to post at that time, so there will be a recording for those who need. Uh, but Howard will be available to give share tomorrow night at 9 o'clock. Wishing you all a beautiful night.